Let's jump into this. Guys, I would like you, because there are many people here who, who weren't at the conference and weren't at the last service, just to spend a couple minutes introducing yourselves again, and then we'll, we'll jump into a bunch more questions. I'm Virgil Walker. Let me turn this on. That'd be helpful. <laughs> yes. I am Virgil Walker, uh, Executive Director of Operations for G3 Ministries, co-host of the Just Thinking podcast, uh, husband to Tamika Walker, uh, uh, father to Princess Princeton and Price Walker. Princess and Princeton are in Omaha, Nebraska. Price is with us in Douglasville. Uh, speaking of Omaha, if you're a follower of the podcast, you know that's kind of my moniker. It's because I spent 12 years total in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, before moving to Douglasville, Georgia, where I reside now. Um, was During my time in Omaha, I was a, a pastor of discipleship for about six years of the 12 years that I was there. And so I uh, enjoyed uh, my time there and definitely am enjoying what I get to do with G3. The G stand, G3 stands for gospel, grace, and glory. Someone was trying to write that down last hour and missed the third G. So <laughs> gospel, grace, and glory. It's a conference-based ministry that is putting out a tremendous uh, amount of resources. In fact, uh, G3 Press uh, actually uh, uh, published uh, the book Stand. And so we're re really yeah. delighted to, to have John Benzinger as, as one of the authors uh, from G3 Press. And so that's who we are. Good evening, everyone. I'm Daryl Harrison. My day job, I am director of digital platforms for Grace to You, which is the Bible teaching media ministry of Dr. John MacArthur, located in uh, Valencia, California. Those, some of you may be familiar with John. He is the senior pastor of Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California. John's been the pastor there for 53 years, since 1969. Uh, my wife, Melissa, is here. We are originally from Atlanta. We re relocated to uh, Southern California about three and a half years ago so that I could join the staff at, at Grace to You. Um, as Virgil mentioned, I co-host the Just Thinking podcast with this guy. We've been doing it uh, December. We'll make five years. Uh, we just released our 120th episode last week on uh, indwelling sin uh, in believers. Uh, we are approaching six million downloads by God's grace over that five-year period. Uh, many of you are, are listeners who we've met in the weekend that we've been here, listeners to the, to the podcast, and we appreciate you uh, listening and praying for us and supporting us. Uh, Melissa and I have three adult children, Colin, Naomi, and Yasmin. They're all back in Georgia, as are the rest of our family back in Georgia. Uh, we miss them very much, but uh, God called us to Southern California, and that's where we are right now. I'm Jack Hughes, pastor of Anchor Bible Church in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, I'm married to Lisa Hughes, who is my claim to fame, my wonderful <laughs> wifey. And uh, I have three grown children, a daughter who lives in Hutchison, Kansas, who's about ready to give, a baby, uh, give birth to our third grandchild any moment. So I keep checking my text to see. The doctor said, I don't think you're going to make it past this week, so we'll see. Um, but uh, I have two sons who are in Washington State. And uh, they're living there, and so that's just that's it. Well, that's great, guys. We have uh, got another question for you, Jack. I want to start with you on this question. Uh, going back to your conference messages um, on Daniel chapter three, the question is: Where was Daniel when Nebuchadnezzar commanded the leaders and officials to worship the image? Any, is there anything that gives any indication where Daniel was? Because he just kind of disappears in chapter 2 and he comes back in chapter 4, but he's not there. Yeah, it's one of those white space things that we don't really know. Um, some of the suggestions are Daniel was sick. Some say that he was abroad because, remember, he was the top ruler under the king. And so he may have been traveling someplace else. But we don't know. Nobody knows. God does, but yeah. he hasn't told me. <laughs> so it's one of those, th another thing that we get to ask when we get to heaven. Where was Daniel at that time? Perfect. So um, actually a number of different places where we can go. So, so let me start with this for, for all three of you, because, because I, I've, I've gotten to know each of you in such a way that I know each of you can answer this question. And so I'd like each of you to answer this question. The question that was asked is, 
do you or have you ever received threats to your family or safety for speaking the truth? Mm. Where does wisdom come into play? Well, to my knowledge, I haven't received any threats. Uh, neither I nor my wife have received any threats that I'm aware of. Um, however, that said, uh, I don't think any of us is naive to the fact that there are threats out there. Um, there are people who uh, don't want to hear the truth. Um, and because they don't want to hear the truth, they don't want to hear, you, you know, you speak the truth. So we're not naive to the fact that there are those who harbor animosity and uh, hatred in their heart towards us. But what we have to realize is that they're not really, we're not really their target. God is. God is really their target. The word of God is their target. And uh, not to put either of us on some sort of pedestal or anything like that. Uh, but we realize that telling the truth comes with risks. Um, you look at uh, the threats that Jesus faced during his earthly ministry. I mean, even in his hometown, he was threatened with being killed. Uh, so, um, uh, again, to answer the question, to my knowledge, I don't think we're, uh, I, I'm not aware of any threats that, that, that have been, been uh, either suggested or, or, or attempted to be carried out uh, against my life. When Virgil and I travel, uh, we normally have security wherever wherever we go, um, and I think that's just being prudent, uh, given the the milieu that we're in right now with so uh, so many ideologies and philosophies that are antagonistic to uh, the gospel in ways that perhaps we haven't seen before. But uh, I'll let Virgil speak for himself. But as far as as far as I know, uh, there haven't been any. But I, I definitely appreciate the question. Yeah, I try to minimize any kind of thought about that. I'm so grateful for people who uh, admire what we do and how we stand and, and, and those kinds of things. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by that. I don't think that we're doing anything unique or different by declaring truth. Um, I, I don't think I'm special in any way, sense, or, or shape, or form. Um, in, in that regard, I look at our historic um, uh, you know, our, the history of, of Christianity and recognizing there are people who, who have paid much larger prices than I have or ever will, uh, that I live in a pr pretty much a free country, a free society. At the same time, uh, we're not naive to believe that everyone wants our good. Uh, I, I mean, we, re we receive a, a lot of um, threatening kinds of things in social media. Ooh, you know. Right. That's, that's real scary. Um, those kinds of things. Keyboard warriors. Yeah, keyboard warriors. Um, emails. Um, I, th I think that I think probably some of the some of the things that kind of don't really shake me, but cause me pause. Like, do you really have that kind of time where people go through like my my social media page, find pictures of me or of my family, and do weird things to them and post them back to me? That's kind of strange. Um, but for the most part, nothing nothing ever threatening from a standpoint of of, of violence. When we do travel, uh, especially if we're at, at a large conference where where access. To where it's not a church building, where it's a where it's a a, a conference-based center where there's public access, uh, I'm always ensuring, especially if it if it relates to um, G3 or, or or some other place that uh, that where we travel, there's some form of security in place so that uh, it, not just for me or for Daryl, but for anyone that we're responsible for, we're trying to ensure uh, that some level or form of security is, is is in place. But nothing nothing real serious. I do appreciate the question. I'm thankful that people are are helped by the truth that we stand on and declare. But I, 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 I want to uh, I I disabuse you of thinking that we're some kind of a celebrity status where people are trying to kill us or, or take, out, take our, our, our lives from us. We're not, we're, that's, just not, that's just not the case. Good. Yeah, I've had a lot of death threats. Please show up, say, this guy's trying to kill you. Um, you know, so I'm, pretty you, I, 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 I'm pretty direct. I'm pretty direct when I preach. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, I am. Uh, the Bible not only tells preachers what to preach God's word, it tells you how to preach God's word, uh, to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all authority and let no one disregard you. And if you don't preach that way, you're sinning against God because he commands you to preach that way. So when you're extracting sin and confronting sin, people get mad. So there's been multiple times throughout my ministry where all of a sudden, you know, the police show up and say, yeah, this guy's trying to kill you. You know, you need to be careful. It's like, okay. <laughs> so that's what I did. Um, I know I'm not going to die uh, before my time. 
Uh, I know that uh, God's time is appointed for me, and I'm not supposed to fear those who kill the body for after that. You know, what else are they going to do? Kick around my corpse or whatever? It's not going to hurt me. So I don't really worry about it. I just am focused on being faithful to the Lord and let the Lord be my shield, my fortress, my refuge. And if he wants to deliver me, fine. But yeah, uh, counseling situations, I've had death threats. Uh, you know, you go rescue a wife from a, a drunkard husband who's beating her and you show up and you, you know, get the police involved and then he takes out his anger on you and all of a sudden I'm going to kill you. I mean, in front of the police officers, it was interesting, but you know, to me, it's just kind of, it's kind of basic. You know, I've had guys stand in the front and veins sticking out on their neck and forehead saying, I'm going to kill you. It's like, well... You know, I try to do the soft <laughs> answer turns away wrath um, and, uh, you know, get ready to, to do this fast in case, you know, there's a, a roundhouse or something. But so far, um, God has been very kind and gracious and has protected me. And so I think it just comes with the territory. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was just that that happened. That would I would come closer to that at an abortion mill. Yeah. Where, where, where I'm serving, but never, never for the kind of stuff that, that Daryl and I are currently involved in or, or on a street corner and never, no, no one's ever threatened to kill me, um, but, but we'll, we'll become more agitated and, and violent um, as, they're, as they're attempting to go into a, an abortion clinic um, where, where I've been ministering, something along those lines where you're trying to stop them. Some of it was my own fault. Um, because of the, the nature and way that, 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 I, that I approached it. Uh, and it would only be after maybe some teaching, some training, and some discipleship. It's probably not wise to, to tell uh, a guy walking the girl into the abortion mill, be a man, stand up, you know, because his, his idea of being a man will be to beat you down. And I'm, I'm not the biggest guy in the world, so that doesn't really bode well. <laughs> But, um, but, but it, it's, it's less about being antagonistic in those spaces and more about preaching the truth of the gospel. And so it was a process of learning how to provide a soft answer uh, that turns away wrath in those instances. So, so Daryl, this question, because you are the, the dean of social media for, uh, for grace to you, this question is, how can I use social media in a way that brings glory to God? Yeah, you know, actually, I've uh, had that question come up before. Uh, matter of fact, those of you who, some of you may be familiar with a podcast called the Women's Hope Podcast. Um, it's a podcast that's produced by the Masters uh, Seminary, and it's co-hosted by Dr. Shelby Cullen and Kimberly uh, Cummings. And uh, I had the pleasure of being a guest on their uh, podcast, uh, what, maybe a year, year and a half ago, where we talked about this very topic. And the question uh, was, uh, was broached uh, in that episode. And uh, I would say to the questioner, the, the counsel that I have for you in uh, considering how can you use social media in a way that glorifies God, um, and I preach this to myself as well, the first thing you need to do is always examine your own heart for what you're going to say. You need to do a self-check of your own heart to... Uh, to assess your motives, uh, to ensure that your motives are pure, number one. Uh, social media has its pluses and minuses, um, and one of those minuses is that it has a sort of very surreptitious and subtle, almost co covert way of, uh, of, of uh, I don't want to use the word addicting you, but making it, meaning social media, a larger part of your life than it ought to be. Yes. Yeah. Um, part of my role as director of digital platforms is grace to you is that I'm on social media all day because one of my responsibilities is, is managing the social media platforms for grace to you. So I'm always monitoring grace to use Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> YouTube um, uh, to ensure, uh, number one, that we're leveraging those platforms in accordance with our purpose statement, which is to get John MacArthur's preaching and teaching materials out to as many people around the world using those platforms as possible. Um, 
And what social media has a, has a propensity of doing is really showing people for who they really are uh, because they can hide behind that, uh, uh, that avatar, they can hide behind a, uh, a pithy little uh, social media uh, nickname, um, but social media can, can bring out the uh, sinfulness of people in ways uh, that you uh, probably may not see in, in, in other ways. Um, and I say that to say again to the questioner, don't be one of those people. Um, always monitor your own heart to ensure your motives are pure. And then as you do that repeatedly, make that a habit uh, that you do every, every single day. If you're going to spend time on social media, pray before you open that account up. Pray and ask God to make you accountable to him for the things you, not just for the things you say, but for the things that you see, for the things that you hear. Because social media is not just a push platform where you put content on there for others to see. It's also a pull platform where other people are pushing content out there for you to see. And social media can be a very, very dangerous place for the eyes and the ears. So you talk about a, 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 a doing an assessment of your own heart motives. You want to pray to the Lord that, Lord, keep my motives pure. Keep my motives, God, honoring to you, acknowledging that God sees not only what you're going to say, but he knows what you're going to say before you even say it. So you want to submit your time, however much time you're spending on those platforms, you want to submit that time to him uh, and, and, and ask him to give you a heart uh, to only say, to only see, to only listen to those things that are going to be sanctifying to you, edifying to you, and glorifying to him. And then for anything, if, if there's any evidence over the passage of time where you are giving that platform too much time of your life, too much of your time that God gives you. Remember, God's giving you this time. He's giving you this breath, this air to breathe. He's giving you this heart that's beating. You do not want to take advantage of that by leveraging, uh, by, by using more of your time on social media than you should, than you have to. And you know, each of us knows when it gets to that point. Each of us knows when it gets to that point. So just keep your motives pure. Be prayerful at all times while you're on the platform, and I think you will see that you will be able to uh, keep a certain balance that's healthy, that's God-glorifying and edifying uh, to yourself. So I ho hope that helps. Yeah, Jack and Virgil, you are both great follows on social media as well. Um, you guys post a lot, and you post things that are really helpful. Would you, would you want to add anything to what Daryl said? Yeah, I just, um, I kind of get up. I'm a real morning person. So like this morning, because I'm on Kentucky time, I got up really early. So I posted some things, I think about 4 a.m. I post diagrams of texts, <laughs> Bible verses, put a few things out there. Sometimes when I'm writing my sermon and I'm reading commentaries and just all kinds of resources, endless resources, uh, I'll come across a really good quote and then I'll just think to myself, you know, I'm just going to paste that over um, on there, but that's pretty much all I do. I just try to, to put good material out. Um, I don't get involved in arguments. If people get snarky, I just block them. Yeah, just nuke them. Um, I don't have time. I, I'm not going to argue with people on Twitter and on 245 characters at a time. You know, it's, it's, it's dumb. So I don't really get baited into that. Sometimes I reply with a single Bible verse. Sometimes people ask legitimate questions. I have quite a few, like, pastors direct messaging me. I try to serve them. I try to answer them. But I just want to be a blessing and have positive intel. But I'm not witch hunting. I'm not engaged in online debates. I just try to, to, to post things that are going to edify other people. I, would, I, I, I love what, what he said. I, I, what uh, Dr. Jack said, I, I, I'm the same way. I don't really get into online debates as much as uh, if I'm coming across content that I think would be helpful or beneficial or something that uh, where I just did an interview with someone or uh, was, was, you know, was on a podcast or, or Daryl and I were speaking somewhere or uh, that I think s someone would be blessed by or if you, you know, we, we take a picture and you post it to me. I, I just want it to be a friendly, uh, fun, kind of lighthearted uh, atmosphere. If, if I'm reading something or a quote, I'll put that out just from a standpoint of you getting a chance to experience maybe some, a blessing from the content that, that, that I've, uh, that I've consumed. Don't really spend a lot of time getting into uh, debates and back and forths. 
unless uh, I'm bored. Uh, <laughs> And, and if, if, I'm, if I'm bored and I actually have time, because I, I usually don't, and, and Daryl can tell you, I'm, I mean, every, every ounce of time of mine is spent trying to push, push the ball forward on something that either we're doing or I'm doing at G3 or something else uh, that I have going on. And so, but if I do have time, for example, if I'm on a flight from A to B and uh, I've, they've got Wi-Fi and I'm just bored, uh, I may get into some back and forth with somebody just to, you know, just to blow time away. But, but never in a, in a, from a standpoint of being uh, destructive or pejorative in, in some kind of way, shape, or form. I always recognize that there are a lot of eyes that are on what it is I'm doing. Uh, a, a lot of you who follow, uh, because of Daryl, I, I, didn't, I didn't get into Twitter uh, at all until I met this guy. And uh, I think, I, I think when, when, uh, when he and I met, I had some 200 followers, and I only got on to watch my football team, uh, and that was it. And so uh, now 40, 40... Wait, 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 were you on the side of your football team? I, well, I mean, we, yeah, my Sooners, my Oklahoma, <laughs> my Oklahoma Sooners, so he, he did that on purpose. Let me keep it, keep it moving. Um, that, that was a personal jab that, you know, anyway. Uh, yeah, now, you know, 200, some 40, 40 plus thousand, you know, connects later. I'm, I'm in, in the mix and in the thick of things and uh, way more than I ever thought that, that I would be. And, uh, but it, I do recognize the platform, that it is an important place and space to be, um, that it is important if you're, if you're desiring to get a message out, uh, if you're desiring for others to know what you're doing, uh, what kinds of things you're promoting, it's an important platform to use. And I think we can do so uh, to get back to the question that you that you uh, that, the, that the person asked, I think we can do so in a way that glorifies God. So we have a lot of young people at this church who are on social and use it, and and so I want to I want to dig in here for a second because all of you answered pretty much the same way, but there there is a form of Christian social media user that that does use social media to get into arguments. Because mm -hmm. what, what all of you are saying is, is, is right and it's good, but it doesn't get you followers. You know? And what gets you followers is getting in a back and forth, calling people out. And so can, can help us, help, help all of us, but especially the young people who are seeing this and are, are maybe even attracted to it, help them think through um, th that whole genre of not just social media, but Christian social media, yeah. reformed Christian yeah. social media. I, I think it goes back to something Daryl said about checking your heart motives. Hmm. Um, and, and, and I think that's in part because there are people who, who, who may see a, a Daryl Harrison with some 89,000 plus subscribers and say, oh, I want to build a platform like that. Uh, because if I can build a platform like that, then I can have people reaching out to me to, to do write, to, to write books or to, or to go speak somewhere or to, or to do a podcast of some kind. And so their thought is uh, the way to do that will be uh, to, to, to be abrasive or to be uh, a discernment guy or to be whatever. And, and then so they get into uh, the, the platform for, the, for that purpose. Uh, and they look for the, 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 the littlest thing that they could find that oh, I'm going to expose this person or I'm going to do this. And, and so they go in, in that direction. And, and truth be told, that really is, is, is um, it, it exposes the emptiness of your own soul. Mm -hmm. I'll just be honest with you. If the point of what you're doing is, is I'm going to do this for the end result of, of getting glory for me so that I can grow a platform, uh, I would caution you against doing that. Um, because it's, it's not beneficial to your own soul, much less the people that you, that you involve in that kind of a process. Um, is there a space for discernment? Absolutely. Um, you know, early on when I, when I walked away from uh, the prosperity gospel, uh, truth be told, I was very angry at those who I felt had lied to me. So every Friday, I had False Teacher Friday. <laughs> I had false, and, I, and I, I lit them, I lit those cats up. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and it was fun. <laughs> the problem became, here was where the problem came in. When I began to examine my own heart, and what I began to witness was, I looked for the most outlandish thing and I felt joy, not in exposing falsehood and, 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 and unpacking truth, 
but how many likes could I get? How many followers could I grow? How many people now thought I was cool because of the way I took down that false teacher? And while there may have been some benefit in people who mm. didn't know that the person was a false teacher, uh, there, there was the, the, the manner in which I went about it, it goes back to what Daryl just said about checking your heart. The manner in which I went about it was not to glorify and honor God, but was to glorify and honor me so that I could build a platform. Um, and so I, I, I immediately, um, in fact, our, our friend Dwayne Atkinson really rescued me from that and uh, kind of put, a, put the discernment piece behind a wall so that we had a number of contributors that no one really knew. And so you didn't get the personal glory for that. Uh, it was the page, and people would follow the page, and, and no one really knew who was behind the page. It was kind of a discernment type thing there. So that really helped That really helped me personally, because now it was no longer me that was getting the accolade. It was, it was, the ben it was, it was to the benefit of all who needed to know that the false teacher was out there. Um, and so, you know, I, I would, that, that's my very long-winded answer for, for how, to, how to address that. Yeah, you know, so as I listen to you, Virgil, I'm going to embarrass John here, and I, I don't mean to do that. <clears throat> but one of the things I appreciate about being here at Redeemer this weekend is that whether it's John, whether it's Kyle, whether it's Dale, whether it's any of the other pastors here, they'll introduce themselves as, I'm one of the pastors here. I'm one of the pastors here. That's a constant introduction, regardless of who the pastor is. So John doesn't say, well, I'm senior pastor here. He doesn't say, he says, I'm one of the pastors here. Now, <clears throat> the connection I'm trying to make to the question about social media is, I didn't set out to get 80-some thousand followers on Twitter. Virgil and I say all the, t all the time with respect to the Just Thinking podcast, we didn't set out to be, be the number one podcast in America. What, what we set out to do was honor the Lord. We, we, we set out to be faithful to, to the Lord in preparing, studying, doing our research, and presenting to the Lord the best product that we could uh, once we press record uh, for the episode. So all I've done is leverage my platform with respect to how God has gifted me. Um, um, I, I love to write. Uh, so I'm, I'm most effective and a communicator as a, as a communicator when I write. So social media is a platform that allows me to use that gift uh, in writing. So I use those platforms to that end and to whatever extent folks may find what I write interesting or appealing, edifying, informative, then so be it. But it's never been a goal of me to be record of mine to be recognized uh, on social media at all. And that's how that connects to what John and the pastors here at Redeemer exhibit. They're not trying to set themselves out. I'm sure they each have unique uh, individual uh, functional titles uh, here at Redeemer, but they don't uh, they don't leverage those titles. I love that that consistently. I'm just one of the pastors. Well, that's kind of how I see myself on social media. I'm, I don't have a blue check mark, you know. Like Virgil said earlier, we're not we're not celebrities. Uh, I, I still have to drive myself around and cook my own meals and do my own laundry. <laughs> I, I, I I do all that stuff. Nobody, can, my wife doesn't care. We have almost six million downloads. <laughs> I still have to take the trash out. Take the trash out. <laughs> you know, she doesn't, she doesn't care about that. Uh, so again, it's, it's about this. You know, one of my, my, those of you who are here at the conference, you know how much Virgil and I love the Puritans, and we so appreciate that this is a church that loves the, the Puritans as well. But one of my favorite Puritans is Thomas Brooks. Thomas Brooks wrote a book titled Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices. And in that book, he says that the primary um, um, device that Satan uses to lure the soul into sin is to present the bait and hide the hook. Anybody ever been fishing? Then you get it. When you go fishing, you don't just slap the bait on the hook haphazardly and just throw the hook into the water. There's a, there's a strategy behind it. You want to you want to attach the bait to the hook in such a way that the, the fish you're trying to catch doesn't see the hook. He only sees the bait. And see, social media is like that. It's a it's 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 it it, 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 it is a a, a uh, platform that has its benefits, a tool that has its benefits, but it can also become uh, a, a hook to try to bait you in. So what I like to tell people is, especially Christians, if you want to really use so, social media to a uh, God-glorifying extent, like Virgil was talking about, getting into debates with people, one way you can glorify God on social media is to be willing to take an L. Yes. Be willing to take the loss. Yes. 
be willing to take the L. Be, 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 before you get on, on engage with somebody, just go ahead and say, okay, I'm okay to be perceived by this person as having had lost the argument. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and be willing to lose, okay? Just be willing to shut it down, be willing to back out of the conversation, be willing to say, hey, we're just gonna agree to disagree, and just let that be that. And you can do that when you don't personalize things. Don't take things personally. Social media is a tool, okay? But when, when that tool starts to get embedded into the heart and mind and you start thinking and behaving a certain way as a result, then you've already crossed into some dangerous territory and you may want to either take a hiatus from social media, if not delete your accounts altogether in, in, in the context of what Christ says, right? Metaphorically, if your right eye offends you, pluck it out. If your left hand offends you, cut it off, metaphorically speaking. But that's one of the steps you may have to take. You may have to delete your accounts altogether for the sake of your own sanctification. So you need to be willing to do that. So, Jack, I, I got a question here, which if I look at the timestamp, was very close to when you started talking about application in your first message um, about being aware of idols, and you used, as an illustration of that, the vaccine for COVID-19. And so the question is, how is vaccination for COVID-19 not biblical and on par with abortion and transgenderism, as stated by Pastor Hughes, question mark? So that's the actual question, and so... Yeah, the point I was making there is a lot of times we're presented with things that are not true or not all the way true. So if you are one of those people who just watches the mainstream media, you're being lied to a large majority of the time. And so you need to find sources that are outside the politicized in the pocket of the current party um, and look at some other things and just hear all sides of the story. When you do that and you're finding like the top, you know, cardiologist, Peter McCullough, the most peer reviewed guy in the world, the most qualified guy in the world saying vaccines are killing people and giving the statistics, I like to know that. <laughs> I want you to know that. You can make up your own mind, you know, whether you want to get the vaccine or not. But at least be informed. Don't just be a dupe. Don't, you, you need to just not be a lemming and submit to whatever propaganda piece is being thrown at you by the majority of the propaganda people. You need to, you need to be discerning. Um, we talked about in the conference, um, I think it was Daryl, about exegeting, you know, exegeting the culture. And what that means is, is when you talk, when you exegete the scriptures, what that means, think of a backhoe where you dig out of the Bible information. You take from the Bible. You don't eisegete, so that's filling in the Bible. <laughs> you exegete truth from the scriptures. Well, in a similar way, we look at all these things, we're hearing all these things, and you know what? You just need to own it, man, that the children of Satan are liars like their father. And they may not even know they're lying. They may just be deceived and deluded and, and, and sincerely deceived. But you need to be discerning. You need to be like the sons of Issachar who knew the times. Yeah. And be a student and not just be to go home and turn on ABC, NBC, CNN and just listen to that every single day. Because I'm telling you, you're going to be led astray and you won't know it. So listen to both sides. That's um, it's super helpful because um, Oh, I, I just think about the person hearing that going, no, that's, that's a conspiracy theory right there. You know, and my response is always, it's, it's only conspiracy theory if it's false. It's only, it's only paranoia if they're not after you, right? And so <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a real sense that, that really take that to heart, that it's, it's hard. So this is the thing. 
we, we want everything given to us on a silver platter and made very easy. And what you're saying is, is that, no, there's a, there's a diligence that needs to go into this. There's a, an examination in order to build the discernment that's needed in order to make decisions in a world where you, you can't trust the sources that are coming at you. Right? Yeah, you think about it this way. If you lived 100 years ago and you lived in a small town, and what news would you get? You'd know about your neighbor and the person down the road, and you, you would know a little bit when, when travelers came into town, you'd hear some things that were going on in the country. But, you know, that's it. You know, that's all. Your little community is pretty much all you'd know. Now, we have people who are making billions of dollars to generate interest through sensationalism. Started in... Uh, Randolph Hearst was one of the big players in learning this trick. And so what's going on is, is we have devices where information is sucked out of the world and most of the worst of that information and then that worst crummy sensational information is repackaged and condensed and put on your phone. So you can always get a concentrated dose of sensationalized partial truth to make them money. That's what's going on. Let that, let that sink in <laughs> as your notifications go off on your phone right now about the, the latest story. So last question as we wrap up, but I think... I'm going to ask it, but it, it could lead to more, so I may ask it again. But uh, this question is, I work in higher education. Recently, one of, my one of our colleges had a drag queen library event, quote, for the whole family to provide, quote, good queen role models. I'm mulling around in my mind how to respond and who to address this to if I do. Any counsel? There are imprecatory psalms. Explain that. Yeah. Um, I would just say that <laughs> as a parent, specifically, you need to be involved in your child's education. Whether they're going to public school or private school or home school, be involved in your parents. There's a really good movement happening right now. You know, during the riots and things, uh, I remember there was like, 23 Antifa members arrested, I think it was in Portland, and 18 of them were grade school and high school teachers. And the parents were so shocked that their children were sitting under anarchists. They immediately got involved in the parent-teacher association and started voting the liberals off the board and taking action. You need, you're responsible for your children's training. So regardless of where you send them, be involved and don't just let somebody else educate your children while you do your thing. You find out what they're learning, exactly what they're learning. And uh, I would say this, don't parent out of fear. Don't parent out of fear. If your child doesn't know the Lord, Satan's already got them. If they do know the Lord, Satan can't remove their salvation. But you have to look at each child. You have to make up your own mind and do the best you can to raise them in the fear and admonition of the Lord and give them a good education so they can function in the world. But I think it's really critical that if you have children, you know what's going on. You go involved. You go to the meetings. You find out what's going on, especially if it's in the public school realm and the Christian school realm. Because a lot of Christian schools um, become an interesting conglomeration of the best kids and the worst kids kicked out of public schools. And you need to, you need to be informed of what's going on so you can parent your children. This, if, if I want to understand the question, this drag queen event is happening at a college? 
and the person who asked the question works at that college. Okay, that's helpful. Um, yeah, a lot of it would. Ha I mean, there's there's so many variables yes. with regard yes. to that. I mean, that, like, what what role do you play at the college? Uh, what you know, what resources do you have? To whom would you complain? Um, you know, th there's so many factors. So it's difficult to give a one answer, quick fix. Here's what yes, you do. Absolutely. A, B, C, go. Right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, the other piece of it has to do with. Um, not so much what, what you're willing to risk as much as how much energy are you willing to spend in a space that is dedicated to exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Because colleges and universities are, are, are not Christian entities. They're not, um, they're, they're not Bible-based entities. I mean, if, if, if the thought was, I'm going to stand up against every worldly activity that is happening at the college, you would have no time for anything at all but to, but to run around chasing every event that was happening that did not honor and glorify God. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, there, there are so many variables. And this may be an instance where, again, we're seeing in the culture this promotion of um, the, this gender fluid um, you know, ideology, this gender fluid theory. Uh, you're seeing the the, the, the transhumanist movement, you're seeing the, the transgender piece, and so you're more animated and excited to be involved in this particular fight because of what you're seeing oftentimes that you're not taking into, into consideration all of the other battles. I mean, there's, there's drug abuse on college campuses. There's every, you name the sin, yeah. you know, the, 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 the sexual promiscuity and activity that's taking place. Are you planning on standing against that? Are you planning? You know, you've got to you've got to think mm -hmm. through your list of priorities and then examine what do I have room for? What do I have the ability to engage? How do I engage it? And then and then kind of go from there. So while I would love to while I would love to say there's a, so much, somebody's raising their hand in the back. While there's a, while I would love to say that there's a one word, I would love to say that there's a here's the answer A B plus C. There's not. Uh, there's a lot of variables in that. If, if, if Virgil were given this instance, that's why I kind of paused to think it through. Um, you know, I may, because of the role that I have and the place I, I'm in, I may write an article about it to address it and the hope to make people aware of what's happening uh, in the hope to see others uh, maybe transform, especially believers, transform their thinking about this so that they could have a conversation with their children about what they're experiencing. I don't know that I would show up on the college campus to perform something, some activity or some march or something along those lines. So it's so it's, it's more uh, book of Proverbs than book of Romans. Yeah. It's more wisdom on this. Yeah. You wanted to add anything? I saw you open your Bible. Yeah, I was just opening my Bible to Proverbs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, I, I know we're out of time, so I don't have uh, time to, to go to a verse right now. I no, just that, keep... That's just a recommendation. That's just, so a, that's just a suggestion. <laughs> like don't, the don't, tell, don't tell him. <laughs> yeah. we, do, we do three hour podcasts. <laughs> just, 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 don't don't just tell him. The guy. Yeah. <laughs> got it. Just There's a, no yeah. service after okay. this. Yeah, so we're I good. got it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, th I think we need to uh, uh, remind ourselves why colleges exist. Colleges don't exist to educate anyone. They exist to indoctrinate. They don't exist to educate. This has been the case since John Dewey, the father of public education. Public, public schools were never founded on the virtue of educating children. It was to indoctrinate them to formulate a social worldview. Um, and now you have, after decades of that going on, now you've got just the right recipe, if you will, for that to happen uh, in the culture. Uh, so for that person who, I, I echo uh, both these, uh, Dr. Jack and uh, Virgil, I just want to echo uh, what, what both of them said. Um, uh, you, you, you need to, uh, uh, I, I think this is, this is one of those this is one of those battles where, uh, number one, I think it might best be fought on your knees. That's good. It might best be fought on your knees through prayer. I think we, I think we, as we, as we survey the landscape of culture, <clears throat> especially we talk about engaging the ungodly uh, manifestations of the sinful culture. I think we've forgotten that prayer is a weapon. We don't pray anymore. We always talk about, well, how can I get involved? What, what, can, what should I do? Uh, what action should I take? Well, I think this is, again, specific to that question. I think this might be one of those instances where the battle is best fought on your knees. 
uh, in prayer and crying out to God uh, to, uh, first of all, pray for those lost, blind uh, drag queens who's, uh, who, who are under the wrath of God right now, according to John 3.36. And then pray for the, uh, the, uh, the leaders of that college um, that God would work in their hearts uh, transformatively to, uh, to, 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 to change the culture there, spiritually uh, speaking. Um, so again, not to rule out, uh, because again, as Virgil uh, wisely said, there are so many variables in a situation like this to consider. So I'm not making a blanket statement when I suggest that perhaps this is a battle that's best fought on your knees. However, I, I feel confident in saying that you can't go wrong by, by praying. You, you, what, can, what do you have to lose by, by praying uh, through that situation? So whatever else the Lord may lead you to do, um, uh, I think it would be wise uh, to uh, bring this uh, issue to the Lord uh, in prayer and then uh, see what God does uh, as you watch him work this situation out. I would just make a yeah. couple quick comments related to this. You know, if you're a parent and your students are there, you know, be involved. But um, if you're an employee there, then there's a whole bunch of factors. Is it weakening your resolve? Is it undermining your faith? Is it causing you to doubt the Lord? Is it like hindering your walk with the Lord? Or is it just like righteous, you know, lot, your soul is tormented by it? Because unbelievers are going to act like unbelievers. And uh, we need to expect that. They are the mission field and they need the gospel. And so, you know, there's just too many variables in, this, in the comment. You know, just there's so many things there isn't like, uh, thing to do, but yeah, if you were getting felt like you were getting sucked in and swayed, then you need to flee. Yeah. So could you do this for like another hour, right now? <laughs> this is super helpful. So let me do this. Let me invite you to come back tomorrow to one or all of the three services because they're going to be totally different questions. Just sit in the sit in the seats that nobody else wants to sit in. <laughs> to give people who it's their first time the chance to have the good seats. But can you thank our, our panel here? So, so let me say this as we uh, conclude the evening. If you're a guest, please take your Connect card out to the, worship, uh, to the Welcome Center. And uh, there are people there to ask you a question, like Kyle said, and give you a gift. So we can say thank you for joining us today. If you are able and want to worship through giving and, or you want to uh, help the Wilders, the giving boxes are to my left, your right, by the doors or by the, on the wall. And uh, finally, if you need prayer for anything, look for the guys in the blue shirts or uh, come find me. I'll be at the back door. All right, let me pray and then you'll be dismissed. Father, please take these truths and not only help us in the sense that you can form our minds to the image of Christ, you can form our thoughts to his mind, but give, use this truth to give us the discernment and the wisdom that we need in order to be light in the world, the specific parts of the world that you've placed us in. Do this for not only our good, but for the good of those that you've placed us around, and do it, please, for the glory of your name. Amen. Have a good evening.